Hey, this is Stephen from the Green Engineers, and welcome back to my research video series. We are doing another an analytical test with uh, with the uh, Repture Host or uh, the Slicer engines for 3D printing. So, on this particular uh, little um, research segment, I tested the pathing optimization of Slicer versus Cura. So Slicer and Cura are both the pretty much the most popular open source slicers out there on the market. Cura being used in mainly the uh, Cura engine being mainly used in Cura, which is a software that has been um, developed by Ultimaker. And Slicer is a just a, a general open source slicer used in uh, many different software. So both those softwares are also included natively inside of Repertier Host. The other one is Skyforge, which is a separate download, which I'm, I'll test later on. I've never used it, so it'd be it'd be cool to uh, test that and see how that goes. Okay, so what uh, the object that we're doing here is we have a 3D Benchy, and the 3D Benchy is blown up to twice its normal size. And the reason being is that I want to amplify any sort of pathing inconsistencies that um, that the software may have. So by doing that, I could I could you could easily see what uh, what the difference between the um, the the pathing optimization of the two software and the pathing optimization will lead to better pathing optimization will lead to uh, less time and the other would be um, if it's not as good, it would be more time. So uh, we're gonna have a few. We're gonna have a few assumptions, and uh, this particular series one is that whatever the slicer gives us as far as estimation time is what it would actually take if we were to print it, which obviously doesn't happen. But um, yeah, so whatever it tells us is the time it would take, right? Not not more or not less. Number two is that what I'll show you here in a second. Number two is that um, the these uh, two options, these two uh, these two set, uh, setups are identical. So this these settings are identical to each other, which they're pretty much are for the most part. Some of these things are are labeled differently or and are set up differently, but I have them set up pretty close to each other. So yeah, they're they're set up uh, pretty close to almost identical. Um, the only thing that might be weird it would be the um, the perimeters, the vertical shells. And uh, solid top and bottom layers of horizontal shells. Here I have th I should have three skins. Um, bottom thickness, shell thickness is also three skins. Three skins top bottom. So they should be pretty close. So we're just gonna assume that these are identical. So whatever this pops out will give us the um, will give us the difference between the pathing optimization because it's the same model, same settings. It's the only thing. So we're going to assume same uh, same model, same settings, and um, all that's going to be the difference is the um, is the slicer used. Okay, so again, I went into Cura, added uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.15. 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.35, and 0 0.4. For uh, I use that for Cura as well as Slicer, so setting the Slicer here, overriding settings. And also everything was 15% infill with rectilinear infill. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, check the data here. So uh, sli I, again, we went off of whatever the Slicer told us is what we're gonna assume the time it's gonna take. So here, uh, this is actually a typo. It's supposed to say uh, Slicer is green. Oops. Slicer is green. While Cura is blue. So here we see that Slicer is taking less time than Cura at the beginning. So this could be a slight inconsistency with the two being slightly different. But we could see that the difference is what? 
seven five fifty two. Fifty two uh fifty two minutes. So that's almost an an extra hour. So that is quite a bit. And that's at point one. So we can see that Kira has a slightly different um slightly different uh pathing as far as that. That could also be because of uh, how Slicer handles the top shell, the top shells, because in Kira I have the top and bottom shells set at one uh, 1.2 millimeter thickness and so if it's at 0.1 that would have to do 12 extra layers top and bottom so that's a total of extra 24 layers 24 uh, 24 layers but with slicer I have it set to three three top and bottom and three vertical shells so that could be um, the difference between having to do 12 lines and having to do only three extra lines top and bottom. So, but then again, that's that's basically built into how Kira and Slicer are um, set up. So that would also cause issues. If you didn't go in and change that every single time you change the, the layer height, you're going to be in trouble. And I, I usually use 1.2 because that I'm usually point, uh, print in 0.4 and that gives you if you're using very small infill on a big part, like 15%, that gives you a nice, nice um, flat top compared to having the dips into, because uh, your your filament will sag into the infill. So after three layers, the first two sagging in, the third layer will be nice and flat on top of the other sagging layers. So that is a built-in disadvantage for Cura, and uh, it adds up almost an extra hour. So set, what is it, 50, 52 minutes? So almost an extra hour on top. And then you see Kira starts to catch up, and they are about equal at uh, 0.25. So at 0.25, they catch up, and then uh, uh, Kira catches up, and then here it's a difference of 17 minutes of Kira being, uh, Kira being faster, and then here it is... Um, Two nine twenty two twenty two minutes twenty two minutes and then uh, this one is four so it's six three thirty six thirty thirty four thirty four minutes so a maximum of thirty four minutes so at the worst it's sixty minutes almost and at the best it is forty um forty three uh, thirty four minutes so. Back here, this is where I'm going to assume that the Cura, um, that the Cura starts to be better pathing. So if I was to look at this and say which one has better pathing, I would say that Cura had has better pathing than Slicer. But Cura's settings are not really the greatest because of those top and bottom shells, how those are set up as being a, as being like, I don't think you can even set them up as a percentage. See, this is just straight millimeters. I think, I think in uh, the actual Cura, the actual Cura, you could set it up that way. But that is a clear disadvantage for Cura Engine that no matter what I set here, it will always have that. So I would have to have a different a different thing for each. So if you set it up right, I believe that you'll be able to win with uh, with uh, Cura as far as the speed and the, the pathing optimization. So that's why it leads me to say that I believe Cura has a better pathing uh, algorithm. And another thing that is huge is the slicer time. So I also took the hardest of the, and also another thing on all those models, the supports were turned off. I also checked uh, the time it took to slice the particular file. To to slice as well as be ready to print. So I have the file sent to my Reptier host and I'm ready to print it. Not just finished and it takes forever to write the file I'm talking about. It's ready, to, I'm ready to click print. So with uh, the 0.1 millimeter layer height, which is the hardest of those tests to compile because it has the most amount of layers and the most amount of uh, calculation in order to 
in order to slice it correctly. Um, slicer, so Cura took 33 seconds to slice the 0.1 millimeter layer height, while Slicer almost took, so Cura 33 seconds, Slicer took almost eight and a half minutes. So that's a different. So that's saying that Cura, on average, is going to be about 15 times faster uh, as far as uh, slicing time optimization. So as far as code optimization of uh, how long it takes to slice. So why exactly that is, I'm not quite sure. Um, it's got to be how the algorithms are written that Slicer takes longer because it's the exact same file, exact same layer, layer. Uh, exact same setup even though Cura probably has to do another 24 layers on top uh, the 24 layers in general for the top and bottom so it has to do more but we'll just assume that the settings were the same so same model you know same settings and Cura takes 33, se 33 seconds while Slicer takes 8 minutes so if you have an older computer that can't slice very quickly you could be there for 15 minutes waiting for a slicer to, to slice that so I've, uh, that being said, recently I've started to use Cura and started to step away from Slicer. Mainly one of the things is that one of the production prints that I'm doing, I'm holding my hand right now, even though you guys can't see it. Um, this print right here for um, the multi extruder, it had issues in Slicer where it just wouldn't add infill in a certain spot and it just makes it hollow. But then you take the exact same model and the exact same settings and put it in Cura and it adds infill in the right spot. So that was what started me to use Cura. I haven't used Cura much before um, this particular part, and now that I've gone through it, I've noticed the difference in slicing time that it takes on my you know, six-year-old computer compared to uh, this, the standard slicer engine, the difference between Cura and slicer. Cura is way faster, and also it generated that infill where I needed it, and uh, I haven't had an issue with it since, so I'm going to be continuing to use Cura. But I do notice that there are some uh, some disadvantages as far as the settings that Cura uses. So again, uh, Cura, you're going to want to go in and have multiple settings for different layer heights. So here, this would be only my 0.4. Would have this as you know 1.2, which is three layers. And on my point one, it'll only have, you know, but still at, at the end of the day, it's still going to sag in there. Maybe not as much. So I, I would have to go and test with every one. So, so, I mean, it could be an advantage or disadvantage because now, theoretically speaking, in Slicer, you have the disadvantage that if you want everything to be 1.2 millimeters, you cannot do that unless you pick a 0.4 layer height and three top and bottom. Yeah, so it only let you uh, it'll only let you pick that here. All right, so that is pretty much it um, for in conclusion. Cura and Slicer are different. Um, they have different setups uh, and different um, settings for you know to be used on the same three D printer, which is uh, kind of annoying. But um, Cura is obviously better optimized as far as slicing time, being 15 times faster engine, slicing engine, than uh, Slicer. And number two is that I believe that it has better pathing because when it goes head to head at point four here, where the, the top and bottom layers are identical, it wins by, you know, 40 minutes or by almost 40 minutes. So that's almost the same here. So I believe that if you get the settings perfect, that sli that uh, Cura will beat Slicer in every single metric that you put it up against. And that's coming from a longtime Slicer user that just started using Cura. So I guess you could take that for what it's uh, what it's worth. So I'm going to continue using Slicer, and uh, maybe in the next video we'll take it, we'll uh, put it up against uh, Skyforge and see uh, see what happens, or I'll just add those those settings in here and uh, learn a little bit more about uh, the Skyforge uh, slicing engine. 
Alright guys, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe for more videos like it and my research video series. If you guys would like to su support these videos, please check out, check out my Patreon page. It will be in the description. And I have some cool... Um, I have some cool rewards in there for you guys to check out, and uh, if you guys are interested, go ahead and uh, and become a Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Peace.